In 2009, an amateur video artist studying in the UK uploaded a video onto YouTube of a recent piece he had completed. After many reports and complaints, the video was taken down. The piece allegedly begins with a lingering shot of a foggy meadow that some believe to be located in Ireland. The only sound throughout the shot is slight hissing and what sounds like muffled, unintelligible speech. The camera starts zooming in on the white shape in the field. After several tedious minutes, the shape reveals itself to be an albino deer. A close-up of its eye suddenly appears, showing the signs of infection and possibly beginning stages of blindness with them. The following shot is of a scene of a deer staring down vanity mirror for about a minute. After this, the piece then takes a turn for a bazaar with the deer in reflection moving dissonance within the real one. Zooming in, the camera focuses on the deer in the reflection, which has begun to move about in unnatural, grotesque fashion, as if someone was molding it like a piece of clay. As these unnerving contortions continue, the camera zooms out, showing a shot of the real deer laying on the ground. People have described the deer as looking strangely at peace. After the shot goes on roughly for two minutes, the reflection is still twisting and gesticulating, but about the mirror itself, it seems to be growing darker. The deer, lying on the ground, then starts to excrete dark fluid from under its tail, suggesting that a birth is about to occur. The tar-like substance then continues to bubble and seep out of the deer onto the ground. At this point, many people claim to have stopped watching it. Some accounts vary of what happens next, but may describe a scene that where a stillborn humanoid infant is birthed from the deer covered in the dark tar-like sludge that makes it hard to describe exactly what it looks like. Some claimed it was a model of a human-animal hybrid put together by the artist for the sake of the film. A blurry close-up of the hybrid's face is seen for a few seconds before it cuts back to the mirror, now broken, with the same field from the beginning. Black and white stock footage of an audience applying is shown in slow motion. When the film ends with the five minute that shot of the black screen, accompanied by the unintelligible murmuring, slowing fading in volume. Many say that the film can no longer be found online, while others say that the audio track is sometimes circulated around file sharing programs, like BitTorrent. There are some who even claim to have attained the film itself through such means. Occasionally the screenshots surface on the image boards and other such sites, but the film itself is hardly being able to be seen its indignable debut. A year later, the artist posted another video on YouTube. This time it was about five minutes of a black screen of silence with just a link to a webcam site in the description to serve the evidence. Viewers described seeing a pair of dangling pale feet slightly rotating above the knocked over chair. The creator of the video, Servine Burf, is best known for its shocking final piece. But many are not as aware of the earlier works, which are similar to the terms of content and style. Shot black and white, the piece often referred to as the Foxtrot was created in early 2005. The film begins with a shot of the moonlit forest, with a slow fade of the beginning into the first scene. A gaunt, malnourished looking fox is seen staggering through the forest wailing and crying out in a haunting voice with what appears to be a nose tied around its neck. neck. The camera then follows the rope to the end and where the fox's cubs can be seen dragging behind. This isn't certain where the cubs are dead or not. The film then cuts to the brief shot of the crescent moon as it slowly dissolves into shapeless blur. The soundtrack for the film is so far consisted of mostly the foxes wailing and a wailing dark musical track, many describe of unnatural and unnerving. It then cuts to the clearing in the forest. 
The fox is seen upliving towards the center, still dragging her young behind her. The music gradually fades into silence as the fox is curled up onto the ground, getting ready to die. After a few moments with nothing but final breaths, breaking up the science, silence of it all. A close-up of her face is shown, her eyes are still glimmering under the moonlight. A pair of small, pale, childlike hands start to caress her face. More small hands start showing up on the shot of the camera before slowly zooms out to how much the fox's body is being covered in caressing hands and arms. The shot flickers out a few times before cutting to the interior of a dark household. The camera then slowly begins to make it to the dining room, where a family of corpses is shown decaying under their seats. On one of the tables is the same fox, but this time is alive and healthy, tending to her cubs. A close-up shots of the bodies follow, revealing them possessing wounds, indicating a possible mess as taking their own life is what happened. In the closing shot, a moth is seen fluttering about and dangling on a light bulb in a dark room. When a hand can only be described as an animal like, reaches up and shuts it off. And that, my little pretties, was Servine Birth. A creepypasta. My final thoughts on the story. I gotta say, this is actually another of the classic creepypastas that happens to be, you know, a, um, a lost, um, film story. I guess you could say that. So basically, this involves, um, a, uh, a video that was on YouTube about a white deer who gives birth and then, you know, we see a fox with her, with her, you know, babies and that. Now, I actually heard of this story from Mr. Creepypasta back a couple of years back, as well as, um, Christmas Pasta. They also narrated this story, and I know Seabass has done it. I mean, this is a really, really popular Creepypasta, and there's definitely, um, a video that describes that. So... I honestly have to say, this story honestly has a really good, um, concept for, you know, what this story really is supposed to be about. Now, I do like the good grammar of this story as well as the sentence structuring, the storyline. Basically, basically some parts of the story just didn't really make sense, but maybe that's just me for what I think personally, but that's just what I think. I mean, the story, there are parts of the story that just didn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, you know, there are certain parts that really didn't make any sense or they were just, you know, thrown in there for the sake of throwing it in there. But I didn't think this story was terrible. I honestly thought this one was a pretty good concept for how this story, you know, went out. I do like how well made this pasta was, you know, written, and I gotta say, to the author of the story, if I could find out who the original author of this story is, I'll be sure to give the author proper credit, because this story is honestly a really good classic, um, creepypasta. It's a good one at that, so I definitely would have to give it fit credit that this story honestly portrayed a really good, um, concept of how well made this, um, story is. Now, I do like the fact that this story does have a really well-made, nice concept. I do find this story to have really good going for, and I honestly have to say, this story was definitely something. It's definitely one of the good ones out there. I mean, I've seen other ones too, but this one honestly is really good. I'm not denying that one bit. It has a very awesome well-made story and I mean I could definitely say the only thing I would suggest maybe the uh, could be changed of the story is maybe explain you know why are all these things happen the way they are uh, like why was it taken down due to controversy like I have a feeling it was probably because of some controversy or something maybe that's why the videos were originally taken down of the you know based on what happened in the story, but that's gonna depend. But 
yeah, I mean, I don't really know. But it's still a really good story. Like I'm just going to say, that's just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to own opinions in regards to these creepypastas. This is just simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story would have to be a... I'm going to get this one at 10 out of 10. <sighs> Pardon me about that. I'm just so tired. But yeah, I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. It's a creepy... It's a really good creepypasta. It's definitely well made. Some parts of it, though, does um not really make a whole lot of sense. But, I mean, this is an older story. I still found it enjoyable, nevertheless. So, it's actually one of the reasons why I actually really thought this story was, you know, really enjoyable. Now, I definitely have to say I have not watched um Craig Smith Pasta's narration of this in a long time, as well as Mr. Cree Pasta, but yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. So, yeah. Anyways, with that being said, and with that being the case, um, yeah. What did you guys think about this, um, Cree Pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications to when I upload, and as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.